don't mount a GoPro to your head. Your head rolls in the crash and then the helmet hits and it can actually cause more injury. Well, if you hit subscribe, that means a lot to me. And if you learned anything in this video or, hey, that makes sense, that's a good idea, you know, let me know, give a thumbs up, put a comment below. I really appreciate it. Now, you probably own a GoPro of some sort or another. If you own a Hero 5, in this case, a Hero 6, 7, 8, maybe even an older GoPro, you own an original Hero. Let me talk about how to safely mount this to a helmet. Our head takes up a lot of stabilization and bumps and shaking when we're walking. So it's a great spot to mount a camera so that you don't have to use a gimbal like this. If you're like me and you like documenting your rides or your rock climbing and stuff, I don't know. I have like four rock climbing videos and I haven't posted a single one. I don't think I've even started editing them. I will try to get to that, publish that. It might just be some background music. Back to today's topic. If you guys watched in the last video, got this Popcron Airspin full face helmet. And I did mount one GoPro mount underneath the visor here. And I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna add another mount to this helmet. And as well, why I chose that as my first mounting location for a GoPro on this helmet. So instead of mounting it directly on top, you can get rid of some of that height by actually taking your GoPro in the cage and mounting it close to the lower part of the brim. Do be careful with this, make sure it's in a safe location because the helmet's here to protect you. It isn't actually just to hold a camera and it's protecting your head. Something that's really, really important, especially for all that thinking you're gonna do. So mount it on there. In this case, this has a full hard shell. It's not just a foam helmet, so it's for multi-sports. So that in case this GoPro gets an impact on there, it is really sturdy, it is safe. You don't have to worry about the GoPro really going through the helmet in most cases. So be careful, be wise about that. It gets a pretty good angle and it's pretty smooth. Pretty simple to do. Plus, you only need these stick-on mounts, which you usually get one with a GoPro or two, and you can buy these on Amazon super, super cheap. So it's really easy to do and use what comes with the GoPro. First up, I mounted this GoPro mount under the visor for a few very important safety factors. Number one safety factor is it looks cool because the GoPro is hidden under the visor. No GoPro is on top. No, one, no. Seriously though, it does make the helmet a little smoother to slide around. As well, this helmet, a lot of full face helmets, a lot of mountain bike helmets that aren't full face include a visor. But this visor can get hooked on stuff in a crash. So it kind of makes a visor dangerous. Maybe we shouldn't wear them on helmets. No, there's engineers. They thought of something. So in this case, they thought a breakaway visor. So if I hit a rock, the visor and the GoPro will break off the helmet. I didn't want to break it all the way off. Hit the wall or the computer. I wouldn't like that. I would have to fix it. But in this case, the GoPro is mounted here. It breaks away in the event of a crash. And it also brings the camera a little lower than on top of the helmet. So you get a nicer viewing angle of footage when you're riding a bike. Now, if you watch a lot of mountain bikers on YouTube, you'll notice they wear a full face helmet for almost all of their filming, unless they're using an actual gimbal hooked to their chest. But a lot of them don't mount the GoPro underneath the visor. They actually mount the GoPro on the chin. Um, I like the idea because you're lowering the camera even further. So you're getting a nice angle. You're getting the bars in the shot. But at the end of the day for me, no matter what, the helmet is there to protect me. In this case, I got the full face helmet to give myself some extra protection for pushing my limits a little further and hopefully coronavirus blows over. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, um, for going to an actual like jump bike park. I've never been, want to go, need a full face helmet. So I bought one, it's on sale. If you want to know more about this helmet, go check out the last video which was just to talk about why I chose this helmet over helmets such as the Fox Pro Frame or the Troy Lee Design Stage Helmet. Now the chin mount for the GoPro it's an awesome shot you watch Seth Bike Hacks or Skills with Phils or Van Can now and then uses it even though he primarily relies on the actual 
Carmen Grove gimbal. And it's a really nice shot, and all you have to do is wear your helmet. However, when you look at these pictures, a lot of these guys doing those mounts, you'll notice they're mounting the camera actually not just on the chin, but below the chin. And this creates an actual safety issue. So let me show you why that's a safety issue. So if I put the helmet on, put it over my head, you'll notice the chin's pretty low. Now, if I actually take Oh, I forgot where the GoPro was. Silly me. I know, I know, I know. I knew where it was. But they're mounting the GoPro all the way down here, which gets you a little lower, a little nicer shot, and it's easy to mount there for most helmets because this bar has a mesh. You can put little holes in it and zip tie a mount, and it'll sit down here. The disadvantage is when you come in and you get in a crash, the GoPro can hit you very easily, or it can be hit by something and be pushed into your sternum and your chest when your head rolls in the crash and then the helmet hits and it can actually cause more injury. In this case, the underside of the chin bar is actually rounded off and made so that it hits kind of level on your sternum and clavicles to kind of distribute that load and pressure. In this case, you're getting most of that load and pressure actually hitting you through this little tiny frame of the GoPro. So, it's not safe, so I spent quite a bit of time looking at how I could mount a camera on the chin, actually like directly on it, and keep the helmet as safe as possible. If I mount the camera directly on the chin, on part of the fiberglass or carbon fiber or whatever shell type you have on the helmet, then it's going to actually prevent as much as it can the GoPro from going through the helmet or through me and kind of defeating the purpose of wearing a full face helmet. Let me show you how I've come up with doing that. And this to do that, we've got a few GoPro mounts we're going to use. Number one, we're going to use one of these curved stick-on GoPro mounts that you clip the GoPro into. So, just one of these. I got the curved one for this helmet, and I'll show you why in a second. As well, you need your GoPro and the cage. We won't be using that. We'll We'll get another one of those in a second. And you're going to be needing two small extensions. In this case, I have a bunch of these small ones, so I didn't order one that's parallel, where they're going the same direction, because they turn 90 degrees, each one does. So I used two of these, and I put a little bolt in there, so I don't have this whole GoPro little thumb screw sticking out. It's a little smaller, a little lighter. Um, I'll probably change this later, or just like, make one that looks really nice. As well, we're gonna need one actual GoPro clip. So this one, it's the newer ones with the little push-in tab. I really like the newer ones better. I know some people are like, this is a GoPro clip. You have this lock in there, which is really nice, so you can't squeeze it and take it out on accident. But they actually fit a little nicer into the clip-in mounts. So there's a little less rattle from these mounts than the original GoPro ones. So if you didn't notice that, this is probably one of the reasons your video quality is going down and your audio quality is going to have little vibrations, shakes, and a lot more background noise in the video. Using the curved clip-on mount, that's going to apply all the way at the bottom edge of the helmet right there and stick on. The curve lines up really, really well and matches shape-wise with the GoPro mount pretty well, especially for a normal GoPro mount. If I really want these little corners, I could take a saw and trim the little corners so it matches perfectly. But for my sake, I don't think I want to rough up the GoPro mount or maybe make it look any worse. Um, so I'm just going to be sticking it on there. If I really wanted, and I might even do this later on, I might sand and paint this to match. Or if I was going to mount it to the yellow part, if the helmet was all yellow, I would probably paint it yellow or whatever color your helmet is. Aside from this guy, we need our actual GoPro, uh, the little clip piece we had earlier. We need one thumb screw. I choose the long one here instead because this one will touch and be connecting the GoPro to the extension arm. 
We need a second thumb screw. In this case, I'm choosing the shorter one just because I think it actually works a little nicer when it's not connected to the GoPro when you easily reach it. Use a small one, so that way you have less stuff to worry about or catching on. And lastly, the actual extension piece. In this case, I put it together using two short extensions because that was just as long as I needed. And I put a little tiny slotted bolt in the middle. And I put a little tiny slotted bolt in the middle. Tighten that bolt down really tight. And then I know I'm good to go. I gotta stop throwing things. So we're gonna take the actual GoPro clip mount and this extension. We're gonna put them together. And just like we said earlier, use the short thumb screw. Put it together. You guys know how GoPro mounts work. We're gonna put them together. Next, we're gonna take the GoPro. In this case, we're gonna put it in the upper mounts. This one actually fits really, really nicely. And we'll take the long, long thumb screw, put it in here. And like I said, I'm using the long GoPro thumb screw in this case because it's a lot easier to turn since it actually sticks out past since it actually sticks out past the edge of the case. The long thumb screw is a lot easier to use, especially if you only have one GoPro and you're mounting it in different locations. Now from here, we're gonna kind of bend it out straight, and we're gonna take this little piece the curved GoPro sticker mount, sticky mount, clip mount, whatever it's called. I don't think anybody knows what they're called. And I'm gonna lock the mount in there, just like it would be installed on the helmet. And to make sure before I stick this on and they leave that sticky goo on the helmet, which is really, really hard to get off, I'm gonna test fit it. So I'm gonna take the GoPro like I would actually have it mounted, twist it up, and in this case, then test that it fits and adjust exactly kind of where it sits on the helmet. In this case, since the actual chin of the helmet sits pretty low, I wanna have the helmet and the camera at the correct angle. In this case, test fitting it, I can kind of just hold them up there, see how they fit, and see that I actually get the camera really level and nicely mounted. And as well, if I crash, the GoPro is hitting the helmet. It's actually supported by the fiberglass shell on this helmet. So it is actually really, really safe. It'd be like just having a rock hit the chin bar on the helmet. Whereas if I mount the GoPro below and it hits a rock, it's gonna bend inward into my jaw, my chin, or my chest and actually really injure me. We're gonna grab a little alcohol wipe or if you have rubbing alcohol and maybe a piece of paper or a towel and we're gonna take the chin of the helmet and we're gonna wipe it off this way we're clean, we're getting any oils or anything off the helmet where we're gonna mount it. This really helps the adhesive stick, and then we're gonna let that actually dry till it's matte again. Sometimes you gotta really fuss with them. Hopefully by the time I get that off, the chin of the helmet will be dry. Now, I'm not gonna show you me putting this on with the camera. I'm gonna put it on so I can line it up properly and then I'll drop the camera back in. All right, so you guys can see what it looks like. Boom. There we go. So that's the actual mount on the helmet. You can see where it'll actually sit. It's kind of down. And this way I can actually clip the GoPro in and out. And I don't think it looks too bad. I might come in and paint this gray sticky foam stuff that you still see there black, just so you don't see it, it doesn't stick out. But really overall, you don't see it much. and. I don't think overall it actually takes away from the look of the helmet, which is definitely a major plus in my opinion. So I'll show you with the camera on here. Back to putting this guy on. I'm gonna loosen both the thumb screws a little just so the camera easily turns and the same for the bottom one for the little adapter piece I have in the center. Slide it on in, lock that down and now we're gonna kind of Get it close and just slightly tighten those a little bit. And there is the helmet and the GoPro actually set up. So we're gonna see how it actually looks on me here in a second. And we'll see later how the angle looks on a bike. I'll go take it for a ride. Here we go, testing the chin mount on the Pokron Airspin helmet. 
Um, it's during coronavirus, so trailheads are closed. Can't access them, so we're just riding around in the hood, enjoying a little bit of fresh air. Super bummed all the trailheads are closed, but that's okay. We're gonna see if this car will pass in a second. See how this does. See the little berm there at kind of hill? I think we can do something with it. Here we're testing the same camera, same settings, just on the visor this time. See how this does. Same jump, except hopefully I'll keep my feet on the pedals. better this is just a comparison clip so you can see using the same GoPro on the common grip gimbal mounted to the chest um, you kind of already know this is gonna don't do the same camera without a gimbal mounted to the head but just so you can see That was so nice. First nice line of the day. For better comparison here, I've added in the side-by-side -side of the chin mount with the GoPro Hero 5 and then the under the visor mount with the GoPro Hero 5. Same GoPro, same camera settings, just in two different positions. These were filmed at separate times, so I know the clips don't line up perfectly, but it'll give you a better side-to-side -side comparison of how the footage actually looks when compared the biggest difference I noticed is the actual just angle of what's captured as well as how the exposure automatically adjusts on the GoPro. I thought the colors look a little bit better on the chin mount for some reason than they do under the visor. Not sure why that is. Now, the stabilization doesn't compare to that of the gimbal. It's not as smooth, the horizon isn't as level, but when you consider not having to wear something strapped to your chest, not having to worry about charging the gimbal and calibrating it or bumping it on something, all you have to worry about is wearing a helmet. It makes this whole system and ability to film your rides much, much easier. So truly, I'm pretty content with the system. If you have other ideas or opinions or thoughts about it or differences you notice, go ahead and let me know. I barely noticed that you could see the handlebars in the footage with it mounted on the helmet more or less mounted to the chin or the visor. Um, I think that's just kind of tweaking of the angle of the camera and where you're riding depending on the terrain. If you're riding uphill, you're probably going to see less of the handlebars and on flat than are if you're sitting you know, at the rear wheel heading downhill. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a little something and just put a little bit of thought into where you're actually mounting a GoPro on your helmet so that you're not putting yourself at risk while you're filming your awesome adventures. So have fun. Have some adventure, stay fun at home, and stay safe.